In this video, we will discuss sinus node dysfunction. The sinoatrial node is located in the right atrium, laterally to the superior vena cava entrance. It is usually elliptical in shape. Two major types of cells are distinguished, perinuclear clear zone cells, also called P-cells, located centrally and transitional cells, also called T-cells, located peripherally. It's considered that the impulse is generated in the P-cells. The T-cells transmit the impulse. Dysfunction of the P or T cells may occur. Dysfunction of the P cells manifests as chronotropic incompetence and sinus arrest. Dysfunction of the T cells manifests as first degree, second degree, and third degree sinoatrial blocks. The first degree sinoatrial block is manifested by slow impulse conduction from the sinoatrial node to the atrium. It's not seen on the surface ECG because depolarization of the sinoatrial node is not seen. There are two types of second-degree sinoatrial block, sinus exit block. Type 1 is characterized by progressive shortening of the PP intervals before the dropped P wave. There is a grouping of the PQRS complexes. The pause around the dropped P wave is less than twice the previous PP interval. The type 1 second-degree sinoatrial block is common in healthy individuals. It may be misinterpreted as sinus arrhythmia. The type 2 second-degree sinoatrial block is characterized by intermittent dropped P waves. The pause around the dropped P wave is exactly twice the preceding PP interval. The third-degree sinoatrial block is characterized by a complete absence of P waves for a period of time, resulting in sinus pauses. It's important that the pause is not a multiple of the POP interval. The third-degree sinoatrial block sometimes causes asystole, which can be lethal. The third-degree sinoatrial block, dysfunction of the T-cells, is indistinguishable from sinus arrest, dysfunction of the P-cells, on a surface ECG. This ECG shows an absence of both the P-wave and the QRS complex, resulting in a sinus pause of 3.9 seconds. There is also a slightly prolonged PR interval. Dysfunction of both the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodes is called binodal disease. Often, the sinus pause may be terminated by ectopic complexes or rhythms. This ECG shows a sinus pause of 7.7 .7 seconds. Pay attention to junctional origin of the complexes after the pause. Sinus pauses may cause dizziness and fainting. Some patients are symptomatic with pauses as short as 3 seconds, while others feel well even with pauses longer than 5 seconds. Decisions about pacemaker implantation should be guided by the association between the patient's symptoms and sinus pauses or sinus exit block. However, a permanent pacemaker should be implanted if sinus pauses last 6 seconds or longer, regardless of symptoms. Some patients present with sinus bradycardia. This condition may be physiological, as in the case of athletes, or pathological, as in the case of sinoatrial node dysfunction. Drug-induced bradycardia is sometimes observed. The heart rate on this ECG is 41 beats per minute. Junctional escape complexes may appear during severe sinus bradycardia. This ECG shows bradycardia with junctional escape complexes. Note the third and fourth QRS complexes that are not preceded by P waves. They are of junctional origin. Sometimes, several escape complexes may occur in a row without a sinus beat. These complexes form a rhythm. An ectopic rhythm can originate in the atria, the junction, or the ventricles. The atrial rhythm is faster than the junctional rhythm, which is faster than the ventricular rhythm. Sinus node dysfunction often results in junctional and ventricular escape rhythms. A junctional rhythm with a rate ranging from 40 to 60 beats per minute is called a junctional escape rhythm. If the rate is less than 40 beats per minute, it is called junctional bradycardia. A rate from 60 to 100 beats per minute is characteristic of an accelerated junctional rhythm. In junctional rhythms, the QRS complexes are narrow in the absence of bundle branch block. If a P wave occurs very close to a QRS complex, in less than 120 milliseconds, and there is no evidence of pre-excitation, then the rhythm originates from the upper part of the junctional region. The atria are activated slightly before the ventricles. The heart rate on this ECG is 33 beats per minute. Each QRS complex is preceded by a P wave, however, the PR interval is very short and variable. The P wave may not be visible if it is completely superimposed on the QRS complex. 
Additionally, the P wave may appear at the end of the QRS complex or within the ST segment. In this case, the rhythm originates from the lower part of the junctional region. The ventricles are activated slightly earlier than the atria. In a junctional rhythm, the P wave is always inverted in the inferior leads. This ECG shows a junctional escape rhythm. The heart rate is 43 beats per minute. The first, second, fourth, and fifth QRS complexes are followed by P waves. The slurred upstroke of the third or wave in the first and third channels indicates the merging of the P wave with the QRS complex. A ventricular escape rhythm, also called an idioventricular rhythm, is characterized by wide QRS complexes that are not followed by P waves. Retrograde P waves are often superimposed on the ST segment. The ventricular rate is between 20 and 40 beats per minute. A ventricular rhythm with a rate ranging from 40 to 100 beats per minute is called an accelerated ventricular rhythm. This ECG shows a ventricular escape rhythm at a rate of 38 beats per minute. The P waves are indicated by arrows and are superimposed on the ST segments. Complexes with an intermediate morphology between supraventricular and ventricular complexes are called fusion beats. They are wider than supraventricular beats but narrower than ventricular beats. Fusion beats occur when the ventricles are activated simultaneously by two impulses, one of supraventricular origin and one of ventricular origin. This ECG shows a switch from a ventricular escape rhythm to junctional bradycardia. The rate is 36 beats per minute. The first and second QRS complexes are wide, indicating a ventricular origin. The last two QRS complexes are narrow, indicating a junctional origin. The morphology of the third QRS complex is intermediate, this is a fusion beat. If no escape rhythms occur, extreme sinus bradycardia may be present. The heart rate may be extremely low. This can result in loss of consciousness. This tracing shows a sinus rhythm of 14 beats per minute. In the absence of a reversible cause, extreme sinus bradycardia is an indication for pacemaker implantation. Atropine may be used as a temporary measure until pacemaker implantation is possible. Medications that inhibit sinus node function, such as beta blockers, verapamil, digoxin, amiodaron, and class IC antiarrhythmics should be avoided. This ECG shows a switch from sinus bradycardia to junctional bradycardia. The rate is 34 beats per minute. The first QRS complex is of sinus origin. The PR interval before the second and third QRS complexes is shortened, indicating junctional escape. All QRS complexes except the first are junctional. Chronotropic incompetence is the heart's inability to adequately increase its rate during exercise. It is usually diagnosed with an exercise test. During the test, the patient is unable to achieve 85% of their age-adjusted maximum heart rate. Sinus bradycardia, or a normal heart rate, is observed during exercise. The heart rate either does not increase or increases slightly during exercise. This leads to exercise intolerance. Chronotropic incompetence is mainly due to dysfunction of the P cells, which are unable to discharge at a high frequency. Ambulatory ECG monitoring shows a slow heart rate throughout the day in patients with chronotropic incompetence. There is no significant increase in heart rate during exercise. The mean and maximum heart rates are low. In this patient, ambulatory ECG monitoring shows a minimum heart rate of 34 beats per minute. The mean heart rate is 43 beats per minute. The maximum rate is 62 beats per minute. This is a great example of sinus bradycardia with chronotropic incompetence. Tachycardia bradycardia syndrome is another form of sinus node dysfunction. It's characterized by alternation of paroxysmal supraventricular tachyarrhythmias and bradycardia. Additionally, atrial fibrillation may interrupt sinus bradycardia. After supraventricular tachycardia ends, there is often a long pause before a sinus or ectopic beat occurs. Patients with tachycardia bradycardia syndrome and symptomatic chronotropic incompetence typically require a permanent pacemaker. If a pacemaker is implanted in a patient with chronotropic incompetence, one with a rate modulation function is preferred. Conversion pauses are a distinct type of sinus node dysfunction. They occur after the termination of atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, or supraventricular tachycardia, 
before sinus rhythm is restored. This ECG shows a 3.7 second conversion pause after the termination of atrial fibrillation. Conversion pauses may be present even in the absence of other signs of sinus node dysfunction. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe.